what's going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here bringing a video here today. Bring guys a Photoshop for which you're very uncool. I'm gonna go with updated thumbnails. As you guys know, I like to give you guys a little updates on the thumbnails and trends, all that good stuff. I would say recently it's all, almost all about kind of like your font choice, uh, combined with of course how you kind of like you put your text set up and all that good stuff. Um, alongside with also putting like little elements of like the game and, and just kind of just showing you guys how to make a really nice cohesive looking thumbnail that of course gets any attention to whatever game you guys are playing and also work for pretty much everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. As always, 275 likes, you can just stick it down below. Um, I'm gonna keep it going. We're gonna go at 275 pretty much the entire time now um but yeah i'm gonna give you guys a nice little preset and all like cool stuff for, like thumbnails uh that'll just make it really easy for us to switch pictures switch the text and call it a day kind of thing so hope you guys enjoyed today's video today with that being said we're done let's just get this thing going and uh yeah next week's video i just finished recording it hence is why i'm probably i'm still like kind of like uh how do you say like like i'm good to record i'm like i'm real happy about it um I hope you guys enjoy it. Just saying. I'm just going to point that out there. Just saying. When you guys watch it, I can't wait. All right, guys. So to go ahead and get this thing going, I'm going to suggest you guys, of course, you guys need a background photo. Now, this can either be like a really cool background of maybe like whatever your gameplay has, like a really cool context shot, like hit like a really cool long distance shot. That could be like that for your background. But for me, I'm just going to be using a nice little background landscape of whatever video game that you're going to be basically playing, right, as my actual background image. So I actually have the little Fortnite city down here, right? Now I'm going to add a nice little uh, gradient map to it, which is gradient map, just like so in your adjustments. Right now, if you guys open your gradient editor on the left and right hand side, you're gonna have two little nodes. Right now, this little nodes here, you're gonna double click on the left hand side one. The left hand side one is gonna be the shadows. The right hand side is gonna be the highlights. Right, and take this, make the left one a black. Right on the right hand side, you just make this one be whatever color of your choosing. So if you guys want an orange kind of background uh, uh, thumbnail, you make it orange. For me personally, I'm gonna be making it blue. Now for this. Right about here, you can, you can move your circle basically where mine is and then move your actual hue table to kind of like figure out what color you guys want. But for me, I just want this nice little blue right about here. Press OK. Press OK again. Now, right before I finish this actual background, I'm going to uh, go ahead and make a new layer, right? Take my brush, hold Alt, and then basically select some kind of color that's on the actual canvas already. Something like this is pretty cool, like uh, cool, like a nice little dark, right, right, right in between like that really light color and that really dark color. You want to get right in between there and get this nice little color like for me, which is this little blue. Right? I'm gonna take this now with a nice little soft brush, which means zero hardness, right? And a pretty good size brush. Just make almost like a like a half U on one side of this thumbnail. Then check your blend mode from normal to linear dodge add. If I just zoom out really quick for me, that's already looking pretty freaking cool because it's a lot less flat than just this right here, a lot less dark, and just adds a nice little value to it. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the text. So I'm gonna put in the word Fortnite. Okay. We're going to put in the words, or for you, of course, you're going to be putting in whatever your video title is. So for me, it's going to be Fortnite Headshot uh, Cross Map. Why not, right? Who wouldn't want to click on that, uh, right? And then a cross map. Cross map. Now, for this here, I would suggest you guys, of course, to use multiple different fonts for your text. In my opinion, it just adds, like I said, more value and just adds this like a really cool character to where you can actually match font. Like it's an angry kind of uh, text, right? You want to put like brush strokes and like a Metallica kind of thing going on, right? Right. So headshot. I'm gonna take this and I put this uh, my second font, which is uh, Commando. It makes a little bit more smaller. Okay, something like that. So headshot. Fortnite text is gonna be simply the Fortnite text, which is a Burbank, and then a cross map will then be the third font, uh, which is gonna be Kaluna. Now, if you guys do not know actually, right, or you can see, of course, Headshot basically has a nice little italicized to it. So if you guys want to, you actually click on the across map or whatever text your guy says, press Control T on your keyboard. Now, you can also do this as well, even if it's a horizontal text. I sometimes do this a lot in my personal designs, but what I do is when I have uh, free transformers selected, right, I right click, uh, skew, take this little middle box here and just basically move this left or right. This gives you guys a tile size version in either direction. I usually just always go right, right? And you can of course then make it a tile size as well. And of course this also changes the font, uh, the way it looks, the attitude as well. So I think it's a pretty cool thing to just of course know um, that you can basically make any font a tile size, right? Not officially though, just so you guys know, right? I think it's pretty cool right there. Um, and I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna say a cross map here. I'm gonna make this vertical scaling 90. Right, so if you guys want to have this chart up, it's under Windows character, right, right here. So I'm going to make a, a vertical uh, 90, vertical scaling 90, which basically means if I put this on 110, right, it'll make it like super kind of stretched out. Now some fonts look really cool when I actually stretch it out, make it super super skinny. Um, for me, I just like to do it just because it adds a little bit different weights kind of going on here, changes up the 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 feeling of the actual font. So that's what I'm going to do right here, right, Fortnite. Headshot across map. Now, the word headshot is going to be my secondary color, which is actually going to be nice, like I said, orange or yellow. I don't know if I said this already, but mine's going to be a nice little orange or yellow, right? Like an orangey color, right about here, I think. I like this. Press OK. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just double click on the word headshot and add in an inner glow. 
So for the inner glow here, I'm going to basically go on 14 size, and I'm going to go ahead and say opacity, lower this down a little bit more, so about 50 or so. And I'm also going to put on a gradient overlay. Now for my gradient overlay, we're going to put on a soft light, right? Right about 45% opacity. Your gradient is going to be simply black to white, right? And of course, your angle is going to be choosing, of your choosing, excuse me, I'm going to put 39, which is going to be basically means my dark side's on this side and my light's on this side. And I like how that looks already. And I'll press OK. Right? Yep. Now, for my white text, I personally don't like pure white text. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just going to give you guys this because most likely you just want to do it as well. Now, uh, I don't like white text, but I'm going to go with like an offset white. So, for where I'm going to actually put that is, I already have that in a nice little style here. So, for this, right, we have an inner glow, which is basically going to be the same inner glow settings almost as the last time that you guys just did for the actual headshot, right? So, I have a yellow, 47 opacity, right about the same settings, by the way. Zero uh, choke, six size, and for my satin, which is basically giving the actual color of this um, little uh, text right here, right? More, more of a gray, which is black, pure black uh, color. Multiply blend mode, opacity 15, distance 50, and size. You're going to put 80 just because it looks better, right? And if I just turn this on and off, you can see this is what gives it that nice little gray to it. And of course, last but not least, is a gradient overlay, which is basically is three little nodes, right? On, on the one on the far left is basically a, a nice little gray, which is ED, ED, ED hex code. And on the middle is a pure white. So if I just double click on it, you see it's pure white. And on the end is also a pure white, just so you guys know. Okay, and all that together just makes a very, very simple, nice little layer style. Now, if you want to never do this again, you can just press new style, press OK. And every time all you have to do is just click on this last one that you guys just made. Um, and yeah, you're good to go. Press OK. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Boom. I already have it saved. We just did it again. Boom. Perfect. So, I'm going to then go ahead and I'm going to move these, little, these fonts pretty close together. You see how much space is here? Move it pretty close together because what's next is going to help quite a lot. Right? So, I'm going to click on the actual first text, which is a headshot. Hold shift, click on the last text, which is Fortnite, and anything between it will then be selected as well. If I hold shift, press control G on your keyboard, then you can press control J to make a duplicate. And then all, all you have to do is just, I'm gonna make this one text on the top of text. And the bottom one here, we're just gonna make sure we just uh, convert it to a smart object, or you can press control E on your keyboard. I'm gonna press control E, right? Now for this text right here, right, this duplicate, I'm gonna just double click on this, and I'm gonna open, uh, mm, we need show all. Right, great uh, drop shadow. So for your drop shadow settings, it's basically going to be ba uh, a better version of stroke in this opinion. You'll see in a second. If you guys were to just use stroke, if I just put the size up, you can see that if I put this on the outside, right, it just gets kind of weird. And you also have no direction and movement. You have no like you can't make it cool in my opinion, right? So if I just take the turn this off for a second, I'm gonna do the same thing for drop shadow though. Take my spread all the way to 100. Take my size. Put this pretty much. Oops. Make sure your blend modes are normal and your opacity is 100. By the way. Right, take your size, just basically move it towards just about as big enough as you would think your stroke needs to be. And then what you can do is you can take your angle. I'm gonna put it on 116 for now to show you guys. Take the angle, and if you move your distance, distance, it moves it basically in that nice direction. It almost gives you a nice little 3D, more 3D feel to it. Now for me, I'm gonna go with 90% and or 90 angle, excuse me, and move my di uh, direction basically to like 14 or 15 or so. I like how that looks. Now I'm gonna press OK. That's basically on this layer right here only. This text layer is not touched yet. Right? So this is going to be my first drop shadow layer. Right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this drop shadow layer. Uh, not quite, actually. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, double click on this drop shadow again. And if you guys do not actually have the newest version of Photoshop, you guys will not be able to make multiple drop shadows in one layer style. What you will have to do is make a duplicate of the text, which is Control J, and then just use the one on the bottom as the next drop shadow that we're going to be doing right now. Right? But for me, I can, I can put them in two in the same one. Uh, actually, before I do that, though, I'm going to take my brush here, right? I'm going to make a pure black brush or whatever color that your drop shadow is. So if yours is not pure black, make this color right here, your foreground, the same color as your stroke color. And what you want to do is you want to take a nice 100% hardness brush and basically cover these little holes that are not yet filled in, right? You might not have that many if you're, if you're, if you're close enough. But for me, I have a few right there and there. That looks good. That looks good now. Okay. So now that I have this, I'll then make a duplicate of this layer, right? So this is a drop shadow layer. And this is now the copy below it, right? So for the copy below it, I'm going to then right click and convert it to a smart object. You'll notice because I did that, it'll now combine what we just did for this layer right here with the drop shadow. If I just take this out for a second. It'll now combine everything we just did into one single layer, which is what we want, right? If not, you'll see it basically only will uh, add in the next drop shadow on this little section right here. Just so you guys know, just for if you guys care to know, don't worry about it if you guys don't get what I just said. And just basically make a duplicate and then convert it into a smart object. That way you can then double click on this. You can then add in your another uh, drop shadow. And for this one, I'm going to take this color here and move this to yellow. 
I'm gonna take my distance, lower this down, I'll take my size, lower it down. Right, move my angle a little bit maybe, like to 138 looks pretty good. And then I can also add an outer glow. For this outer glow, we're gonna take our size, put this up quite high, take my color, move this to blue, just like so. Take my blend mode, move it to uh, linear dodge add, put my opacity up and make this as cool as possible. I think that looks pretty nice. Yeah, press OK, press OK again. Now we have a nice cool text that just honestly works. It looks really, really good and it's super easy to also recreate. Now I'm gonna of course make a new layer right above my text here and I'm gonna take my orange color right here and make a nice little soft light brush or soft brush, zero hardness. Click on the actual word headshot, right? And then change our blend mode from normal to linear dodge add and make it look pretty freaking cool, right? Just add a little bit of a glow in there. If you want to add yet again another, another new layer, take a nice little blue maybe, and move it on the far right hand side and then use a glow. That might look good too. If it doesn't, you can press Control U on your keyboard and move the actual top cue bar to see if another color works. And for me, I'm gonna say, that looks pretty cool too though. But I'm gonna say that looks pretty cool. Maybe your lightness wanna lower down as well. I like that, press okay. Take my brush here and erase this side a little bit. That looks pretty nice, okay. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a quick little thumb, a uh, little, how do you say it? Hmm? Huh? Would you, would you click on that face right there? Okay, cool. Boom, I'm just gonna take a nice little webcam shot. Cool, have a little webcam shot here. I'm gonna go ahead on my webcam shot, which I would like to you guys to do is, of course, convert, uh, convert it to a smart object. This will make sure that anytime you guys use filter, camera, filter, raw, excuse me, that'll save your settings and you just go right back into that layer very, very quickly, right? I'm gonna go ahead and add clarity. Exposure, lower my blacks, up my highlights, lower my shadows. This might not work for you, but whatever, just kind of mess around with it, right? Until it looks good. Press OK once you're done. Just make it pop out a little bit more. Okay, now for this, I'm gonna put on a layer style, by the way. And for this layer style, it's gonna be basically an inner glow, which is gonna be basically the same color as what's going on in here, right? Put the size up a bit. Right, I have basically 50 opacity, zero choke, 32 size. I'm also gonna put on a outer glow, which will be also the same color as before, which is gonna be blue on the outside. For me in this case, right? Put opacity up a bit or a little smaller if you want. Size, pretty good size, about 92 or so. I like that. Now if I honestly want to, I don't know, maybe maybe the blue would be better. It does look better. Okay, we're gonna go blue, we're gonna press okay. Now we have a nice little inner glow on this as well. I'll give it a nice little tilt as well. I think it looks pretty good. Cool, now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit more context in here. So we're gonna be like, yo, like, whoa, for a good shot, exclamation point. Make it white, we're also gonna make it Burbank font. Whatever font of your choosing, but I'm gonna make it Burbank because this is Fortnite related, right? Lower this down a little bit. I'll make my exclamation point yellow just for color scheme's sake, right? And if the yellow doesn't look too good, you can make it a little more of an orange, right? As long as it's close to the same family of color. So it'd be like, whoa, and then we can put on the, on the bottom, like, no way, right? Let me make it a little more smaller. Rotate a little bit more. I think that looks pretty freaking dope. We'll make the word way yellow, right? Or an orange, orangey kind of color. I like that. Now, if you want to put a little bit of a drop shadow on it, I would do drop shadow, zero spread, zero size, black for your color. And then your distance is what you guys will change. Load the opacity a little bit more. And I think that is the freaking way to go. So con uh, copy that layer style. Click here. We're going to go with paste layer style. And for this word way here, I'm going to make a new layer. Take my brush. Select the same color of this orange here. And just basically click on the word way. Right? And then linear dodge add. And see if that works. Right? It should in most cases. If it doesn't look, if it looks too mustardy, Control U to free trans, uh, it's not Control U to free transform. Control U for hue saturation, take the top bar, move it left and right, and you might get a color that kind of works better. And for me, I'm gonna go ahead and say, this works a little bit better if I did this, I think. All right, yeah, there we go. It looks pretty good. Press OK. Now, what I will do uh, now, I think it's pretty much done, besides the fact you can do something really cool. So, first layer, hold Shift, select the last layer, which is the background layer, Control J, then control E to merge it all together, right? So you're making control J to duplicate, control E to merge it all together. You're gonna have one full layer. I'm gonna go to filter, filter gallery. We're gonna go to plastic wrap and use the strengths 19, 13, 14. Press okay. We're gonna take this and put this on light in color or lighter color, excuse me, press that. And I'm gonna then add a layer mask just like so. 
And what you guys on layer mask is if you guys press B on your keyboard, is the brush, black erases, white fills in. You'll see right here, black and white, black erases. So if I take this on this layer mask and erase it just like so, and what this will do, if I just erase it in here as well a little bit. We want nothing on the outside here. I think the outside looks pretty good, but on the inside, right? Just a little bit of erases here and there. You can make your text look really, really cool. So this little darker area right here makes it look super, super dope in my opinion and just adds so much, like I said, value again. I think the word value is my favorite word in this video, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna then go ahead and just add another uh, uh, layer. Take my brush, maybe take a blue over here, a blue over here, then your dodge add. Right, it looks pretty good now. Take the first layer, hold shift, select the last layer, select everything in between, and then control J. Control E, literally do the same thing over and over again. Control J to duplicate, Control E to merge it all together. Now everything in this layer is everything we just did right below it, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and right click, uh, convert to a smart object, filter, camera filter raw. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit, few things. So clarity, I like to add just a little bit more, 14 or so, right? Take my black so I get a little bit more darker. Take my fourth tab, which is HSL adjustments, hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments, just like so. Take my hue, and this is where you can actually change the color of the entire thing. Like, if you want to make it purple, bro, make it purple. I'm going to go with, like, a nice, blue, like, a super cool tealish green, right? We'll make our yellows, like, a really cool, like, orange, right? Take this, make a nice little orange right here. That's why sometimes the colors don't really quite honestly matter, but your uh, beginning colors, because you can make it look super, super dope, even more dope afterwards, in my opinion. I like this. I like this. Right, you take your luminance and you want to mess around with this a little bit more. A little more darker there. More lighter here. Press OK. And then you got yourself a very, very dope uh, thumbnail. What I like to do is press Control Alt Shift S to save it. And my save settings, I just use JPEG because usually it's going to be under two, mega, uh, two megabytes. So make sure you guys know that, of course, when you upload to YouTube, you have to be below two megabytes. So you can't use PNG uh, 24, but I would just use JPEG with 100%. Uh, 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 quality. I like to put 98 because sometimes uh, my file is a little bit too big and of course it's a little bit too big for this size here so I just go with 98 but go with 100 if you can right and uh, yeah that's about it I do hope you guys enjoyed this video here today I hope you guys make some freaking sick thumbnails and enjoy yourselves all that good stuff of course you guys can of course how do you say uh, change around anything I see if you don't want a webcam put a character in there if you don't want a character you can put like yourself like more full body and you guys pencil yourselves out um, which is a pretty cool idea as well, but I do hope you guys enjoy it. Like I said before, I'll tell you guys later, Sisto HQ out. Don't have to get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, and just, you know, go kill it out there and have fun. Later.